Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. We just got to Saguaro Lake here. It's uh, afternoon, probably like 3.30. And it's a busy, hot day at Saguaro. Uh, today I was kind of coming to the lake just to, uh, I don't even think I'm going to, well, I'll probably fish a little bit. I'll probably throw around like a jig or some drop shots or something. But basically what I was coming out here to try and do was just find some new spots. So I'm going to graph around a lot. Probably got a good four hours before the sun goes down. And uh, I'm going to try and do a lot of graphing around. So I figured I'd bring you guys with me and uh, show you maybe what I find and, you know, a little bit about how I use the side imaging. Sorry, it's going to be pretty loud today, I have a feeling. Um, but uh, yeah, so just kind of working on the garments and, and shooting my side imaging, down imaging, maybe a little 2D sonar and try and, uh, try and locate some offshore areas that uh, maybe I haven't found yet on Saguaro. So that's kind of the ticket it seems like. I mean they're, they're not going to be, you know, with this heat they're not going to be too shallow. You'll still catch some up shallow but really what I'm looking for is I, I want to try and target like the lake's really low, so I'm going to target anywhere from like 10 to 20, let's say 10 to 30 feet is what I'm looking for on the side imaging. Um, like rock piles, brush piles, anything like that that I could uh, catch some fish on when they move deep. Like summertime, wintertime areas, stuff like that. Um, so anyways, hopefully this uh, video is a little interesting for you. I, I like getting into that stuff, uh, side imaging and all, just electronics in general. I like learning more about it and uh, definitely like finding new areas on your lake that you can catch some fish on. So hopefully it's a little educational for you. Um, it will be for me because I haven't really graphed Saguaro. You know, I'm always with buddies fishing. So, uh, you know, they, they just like to fish. You know, they like to hit that bank and throw their crankbait. Adam, I'm talking to you. Um, you know, and I, I do like to spend some time and graph around, but when you're fishing with buddies, they don't they don't enjoy that kind of stuff, which I understand. So, uh, anyways, we'll dig into it and kind of see uh, see what we find on the lake. Hopefully, catch a few fish on the spots I find, and uh, hopefully, you guys learn a thing a thing or two. So, if you guys like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more videos that I'm going to be making different than just fishing videos uh, you know some some learning videos on Garmin electronics I do I do have garments um, so hopefully some educational videos on that I'm still learning them myself so I don't know everything about them but I definitely like learning as much as you guys probably do so uh, like I said like the video if you like it hit the subscribe button leave me a comment if you have any questions and uh, we'll get to it so, thanks for watching so just to point out a few things um, about how I use my side imaging, um, I always tip it. I'll typically have it set on 70 feet to the right and left. Um, it just depends on how far you want to see out. I have 12-inch screens, so it's not going to be it's not going to be a huge screen to view. So if I go any more than 70 feet out, bigger boulders and stuff like that are going to get smaller on the on the picture. Um, Another thing that's kind of important is you want to be in gear and going a certain speed, like at least a mile an hour. Um, you know, when you're just sitting still, you're not going to get like a crisp image. You're going to get these kind of like wavy looking uh, images on there and you're not going to really, you're not going to see that good, at least on the garments anyways. You know, the hummingbirds are a whole different story. I haven't really seen them, but I know that that mega imaging is really really crisp and clean image so uh, a little bit different between the garments this does have a HD transducer so you know you're gonna see a little bit better than your normal Garmin that doesn't have a HD but I don't think the difference is that big so uh, just something to something to think about so if you see on my screen now I'm going in idle right now about one mile an hour uh, hopefully this glare doesn't look too bad um, but uh, so I'm just in idling around mode and you can see all these little spots that's all bait fish most of it is anyways some of it's uh, it's 
some of it could be stuff floating around, but a lot of bait fish, and uh, you kind of see like weed, little weeds in there. I'm just coming off a point right here, so that's what that is, a little point. Um, but basically, what I'm what I'm looking for today is like, uh, like I said earlier, just rock piles, brush piles, something that is off the bank, a little ways that maybe people aren't uh, seeing or you know I'm missing. Um, and basically, I'm looking for shadows like that. You see that big shadow? So that's like a bush right there, uh, some kind of a, a tree or a bush in the water, big shadow off of it. So you can actually zoom in if you want. See, zooming in doesn't give you the best image there. Um, but that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. So I'll, I'll check in with you guys when I actually find something good to show you. Alright, so I just marked this little brush pile here. Uh, so it's about 20 feet deep. Got a brush pile, you can see the big shade pocket there. Looks like got a couple fish around it. Um, so I, I marked that, we'll go back there and hit it. Um, got a little more to the right here as well. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for is 20 feet. Um, we'll go ahead and continue, continue on here. So these lines I just started, you know, paused and started the uh, side imaging. So you're going to see it kind of refresh. And I'll show you, see when you're hitting these waves like that, you're going to get little, that's my motor, marks from my motor. Alright, so I'm coming up to this point here. Where, oh, and there's some fish right there too. Uh, some bait, some fish. I've scrolled over this quite a few times and fished it a few times, so there's even more fish. Some of those look like yellow bass because of the way they're stacked up. But, uh, you know, I've stopped in a lot of areas where I've seen just yellow bass stacked up like that and still caught bass, so there's still gonna be bass around there. But I'm gonna check the outsides of this point, the deeper portions of it. Um, and kind of just scan around. Actually, I'm going to throw out right, right in here and try and catch one of these really quick. I'm going to jump in the front see if we can get one. Something pretty awesome though about rolling over some fish on your graphs and knowing you can catch them. I literally just stopped the boat and uh, threw right behind where I, I ran over a few. I actually did, wasn't sure if they were going to bite because I just rolled my engine over them and they were probably like 10 feet deep. more down there. I have a jig tied on. I might throw at them too. Uh, craw. 
So really quick before these boats come back, they're all over the place. I want to show you where I'm kind of fishing and where I found those fish on. This is a new spot I haven't really fished. Um, I've seen it before, but basically what it is, is uh, this is like a, show you here. it's kind of like a giant, I guess you could call it like a grass flat. There's a lot of grass in there, reeds all on the shore here. So I came to this point here and uh, what it, where I found the fish were, were, they were right on this drop here, which isn't much of a drop. These garments, the contour lines are one foot. So each one of those lines is a foot. So it's a slight, slight dip down, um, but they're not deep out here. They're, they're kind of on this first green ridge, which you know, it says 11 feet there. Um, the the water's down a little lower, so I'm actually sitting in about 10, 11 feet right there. Um, so let me show you what it looks like on live scope here. So I'm I'm sitting in 9.4 feet, and you can see right where it drops down. There's a ball of shad there. Let me get closer over there. So there's some bait fish there. And I didn't see those fish actually. There they are. Okay. So there's a school of fish right there eating on those shad. That's what that looks like on live scope. You can see all those bait fish there. And uh, those are probably yellow bass. All right. So we only caught one fish. You know, those were probably mostly yellow bass. I was getting bit quite a bit. Uh, in that spot just to, they they were probably either bluegill yellow bass something like that so i'm going to keep scanning this edge here though and just kind of see see what i find i got my side scan i got my 2d sonar my map um the side scan is not really showing a whole lot because this whole area like i mentioned earlier is like kind of just like a big grass flat it, there's really not a lot to it uh, but these fish are the, I, they seem like they really like grass at Saguaro Lake, so I do try to find grass and fish it more than anything, but or rock pile, something like that. So yeah, I'm seeing a lot of fish around. They're just little, you know, yellow bass, bluegill, nothing special really here. So we're gonna move on to the next spot. A lot of bait though. We're seeing a lot of a lot of bait. You see on the side scan all the bait you see in there little weeds or habitat possibly but let's move on to the next spot all right so this next spot here is uh this is a pretty big community hole a lot of a lot of people fish this spot um, i fish it quite often too and you know we always usually catch some fish out of it but uh, it's it's heavily fished um, so we're gonna see, we're just gonna scroll over it and uh, see what we find on the, the graphs here. So you can see a lot of bait, a lot of bait fish in the area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run over this uh, grass point here, just kind of follow some of those edges. point here I have a little waypoint there it's pretty shallow but there's still uh, there's just a lot of bait a lot of activity in this area probably a really good yellow bass spot if you fish for yellow bass but we're just gonna keep on cruising I like to when I'm just riding around I like to have my side scan my 2d and my mapping all in one page I can swap back and forth but uh, it's just the way I like it. So I'm about to roll over the grass point here. So there's a nice fish right there. Got a couple. Those could be bass. Those are bass. Those right there are bass. Should be anyways. You can kind of see on the So here's another pretty well-known spot here, kind of a big long point 
right here. A lot of bait fish on the side imaging. You can see a lot of bait on the 2D. Just kind of scrolling through, seeing if we could find anything good here. That could, I don't know if that's, I don't think that, that could be a fish on the bottom. But. see all the bait on the one side scan probably a bunch of fish around there just like what we scrolled over probably little bass little yellow bass nothing really to make me want to stop can't scroll over the dead center and I'm seeing tons of bait around here I'm gonna give it a shot anyways stack of uh, fish that we saw that we rolled over. I didn't see any big ones in there, but I don't know if you guys got a chance to see that on the live scope. I got the camera back there on the live scope. I don't know if you might, might have been able to see that fish swimming around. I wasn't paying attention, but man, that was a good fish. stop oh. yellow bass I know I'm finding a lot of yellow bass bluegill. I don't really see a lot of bass they're still in here
So that first one I hooked up, I thought I had the camera on on the live scope and I didn't. It was on the mapping. So it's a nice chunk though. Feels heavy, probably about two and a half pounder on the drop shot. And uh, hopefully you guys saw I'm swimming around on that live scope, but basically, uh, you know, I kind of showed you on that camera back there that's aimed at the live scope, showed you that group of bass that we rolled over. We saw a bunch of them. I saw them on the live scope and I just made a cast in there. Sometimes you can't see these bigger bass on the live scope, especially if they're like right on the bottom. So it's always good to just throw at them anyways, but back off and try and get at them again. So there might be a few in here. I should really take the time to retie because my hook point's getting dull. That might be why I uh, lost that other one. But I'm lazy. Alright guys, so here's a spot I'm going to try out um, that I would suspect there'd be some bigger bass around. If you look at this map, you got a pretty steep drop off ledge that goes, oh, that goes all the way back through here. Pretty big steep drop off. Um, and a lot of bait, a lot of bait. And it's, it's pretty deep. Uh, it, it drops off pretty deep. So I'm going to try this out and then it goes up into the shallows here uh, and it has a nice little pocket. So I'm going to give this spot a try. And uh, I just have a feeling that I got a feeling that if there's going to be some big bass caught today, it might happen in this spot. So we'll see. That's why it's pretty important too to leave all your settings at the you know, whatever depth uh, or whatever uh, length you're going for. So like live scope, when, I, when I'm using this live scope, it's uh, set at, it's set at uh, 60 feet. It's set to go 60 feet out. <laughs> so I, I get a pretty good judgment of how big a bass should be on there compared to how big a bluegill is. I think took my worm. Um, so I always keep them at the same same distance. You know, uh, 60 feet out for the live scope on the side imaging. I'm doing uh, 70 feet out and so forth. Always keep them the same. You know, if I'm just looking for structure and stuff like that on the side scan, I'm trying to look at a lot of area. I'll go out to 100 feet or more, but as far as finding fish on them, you want to try and keep the same same settings. So if you're bluegill or yellow bass fishing, I think the live scope's perfect, or crop. Live scope's perfect for that. Because you just different activity. You see those huge schools, and it's a lot easier to catch other fish with a, a live scope when you're having a huge school like that. But bass it's good for too. It's just I think it'd be better for schools of fish.
just getting it because I got it on the steering wheel. My, when I hit big waves, that steering wheel falls off. Uh, it falls off the steering wheel. But... Alright guys, we're going to call it a day. Um, it's getting pretty windy out here and I don't think uh, you guys will really hear what I'm talking about anyways. And The audio is going to really suck. So I'm going to call it a day. We caught you know, some, some small fish, a couple decent ones. Um, wasn't really going out to catch a giant, although I thought I was gonna in this spot, but it, it's gonna start getting crazy and I, I'm by myself. I wanna get the boat on before it gets uh, too nuts out here. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we caught enough to make a good video. Uh, if you guys are interested in a live scope or Garmin's, uh, I highly recommend them. I mean, that they're awesome. I've had them for a while. Had the smaller screens and then I upgraded to the 12s, which, uh, are really great for the live scope um, but to do side imaging down scan all that stuff you don't really need a, a giant screen um, I the, what I did was I just wanted to get rid of the two I had here and, and get one big screen and I could split it up into you know four or however many uh, things I want on there mapping 2d side scan whatever I want so it works out good for my setup but uh, Hopefully that gives you a good idea as far as live scope if you're interested or kind of on the fence about it. It's good and it's bad. Um, you know, it does help you catch a few extra fish. Um, sometimes it gets you to stay on spots a little longer than you want. So, you know, you kind of make a decision from there. But I, I personally like it, especially, you know, when you're on new bodies of water, you're not really sure where the fish are, what they're doing, how they react to certain baits. Um, it really gives you just peace of mind that you know there are fish there they're just not liking the bait you're throwing so anyways thanks for watching the videos guys if you like them hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already I am gonna do a lot more Garmin videos and I'm gonna do a better live scope video because I am not sure how this one came out but uh, I'll post it anyways and we'll, we'll do a better live scope video um, in the future along with side scan down scan 2d all that other stuff to just to kind of pass on some knowledge I've learned about it. So thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.